Hey friends, Kevin here, and you know sometimes I just like to bring you interesting news or interesting stories about what's going on in the camping van RV world, and here's one for you, and I'm going to link all this down in the description below if you want to go ahead and research this further, but true story, a couple just got fined $1,000 for making a video, a YouTube video, while they were in a national park. It seems here's another weird thing that's going to get cracked down on. But here's the story. You have some small YouTubers and you have some successful YouTubers, generally who have been at it longer, and those people deserve the success that they have when they have a channel that takes off after three or four years of work and they, you know, can make, make a full-time living at this. Because if you've ever done this stuff and the editing and everything that goes with it, you realize how much work goes into it. And I've seen some of these, these people's videos over the years. But they got popped in a $1,000 fine for filming in a national park essentially because a tipster informed the park service of what they were doing. And the parks, National Park Service decided this fell under commercial filming because this particular couple has made videos about the amount of money they make from YouTube and different things while they are on the road. So if you are filming commercially in a national park, it requires a $300 permit. You have to pay an additional $150 per day and you have to let them know where you're going to be in the park and exactly what you're going to be doing. Was this tipster a jealous viewer? Was this tipster somebody that is a professional film person that got mad, got jealous of these amateurs who figured out how to make some money and decided to go after them. I don't know. I have a problem with the word anonymous tipsters. We'll talk about that in a moment. But this has the potential to cause all kinds of problems for all kinds of people. Now, it used to be if you were looking at a professional film crew, it was pretty obvious you were looking at a professional film crew. But that was 15 and 20 years ago. Now, you can take amazing videos the average person just with a cell phone. And I don't think those people are going to have any issue. The problem comes with other equipment that gets used. You can have cameras that have, you know, these two foot lenses hooked on them. You have boom microphones with giant shields. You have gimbals that automatically adjust and keep the camera level. You could have a lot of people that are on the road shooting videos that are using a lot of high-end equipment, especially the ones that have become successful and they've reinvested some of that money into better equipment and trying to make higher quality videos. So while there are two sides to every story, you can kind of see where the park service is coming from and the commercial people making documentaries and such that have probably been affected by YouTube becoming what it has been, especially in the last five or six years, of having people come in with really nice equipment and being able to produce really professional quality videos that the average person wasn't able to do before. It's the same thing that's happened in the music industry. Music studios have just about gone bye-bye. Even the successful musicians, people that's had bands for 20 and 30 years, they all have home studios now. They can make entire albums with five people sitting in five different parts of the world just sending their part of playing the guitar part, the bass part, the drum part, and the vocals. All to one person and letting that person mix everything down. So those days of musicians all crammed into a studio for 14 hours a day working on a song, those are almost over. 
and video editing and production, the same thing is now happening to it. You don't need these professional production houses and, and all of these things because you can basically do it with computer software as good and sometimes a better job. So we're walking a real fine line here over how the National Park Service in their roughly 60 national parks in this country are going to handle this and how much they go, are going to enforce whether you're there filming for commercial purposes or not. And if this thing was to take off, and this is why it's very bad, if this thing was to take off, now you have not only the national parks, you have all the national forest and all of these other things, Army Corps of Engineer places, all of those places that fall under that same umbrella. Then you have the potential for the states and the state parks to get into the game. And being able to prove who is, who isn't going to do something for commercial use, this is the same stuff that's been going on for the last 20 some years, the arguments about e-commerce and you know certain small vendors not having to charge sales taxes for packages they are shipping out of state. And now those people have one state, the state of Wisconsin, that is going after all of the small people for money even though those businesses don't have a presence in that state so there's a lot of odd things just because a law gets passed or somebody interprets a law a certain way that can cause a whole lot of problems for a whole lot of people and this certainly has the potential to be an issue for everyone that is doing videos on YouTube so obviously, I want to hear your opinion about this. Is it overreaction, overreach by the government, by the National Park Service? Are the people creating videos wrong? Should there be some cutoff that if you're making $50,000 a year off YouTube, you should fall into the commercial category and you should pay the National Park Service to go in there and film? How are we going to handle this going forward now that we have this oddball precedent set? And I don't like any stories and anything that's done by anybody that's an anonymous source or a tipster, especially when the national press gets a hold of a story. Because quite honestly, an anonymous, anonymous person could accuse you or I of anything. And it's hard to defend yourself or your actions against an anonymous source. Because generally, that anonymous source, they've got some angle. They've got some stake in the game. And journalists should be investigating that anonymous source and running a background check on that anonymous source. First of all, and seeing how reliable they are. And second of all, trying to figure out why they are stepping out and trying to ruin someone else's reputation. That's my opinion. Yours may differ. You're certainly entitled to yours. You can put that in, down in the comment section too. And let's get a little bit of a discussion going and see what everyone else's viewpoint is on this. But it's kind of scary to think that I could walk be in a national park and pull out my little hundred dollar gimbal with my little hundred dollar cell phone hooked to it and somebody decide that I'm because I have a YouTube channel that this falls under commercial use and not even a warning just here's your one thousand dollar fine because you didn't know about the three hundred dollar plus a hundred fifty dollar a day permit that you needed to buy I have a big issue with that, but I hope you found this interesting, hope you found this pro thought provoking a little bit to think about all the ways this can completely blow out of control and blow up in people's faces. And we'll get back to more minivan and travel van and travel places and van life videos. We'll talk soon.